Welcome again to the Actors Bell. This is Denise Baratrepat, and you're probably wondering who the fuck is she? <laughs> if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, yes, I did not upload any episode in the past two weeks, and I am here to apologize for it. But if you just follow me on social media, which you should on Instagram and TikTok, especially then you will know what has been going on these two weeks. But if you only have been listening to the podcast, let me tell you, because you're in for a ride. The reason why I have not uploaded any episode, and it's not because I didn't have already recorded episodes with guests, which no, are also not going to be happening today. They're going to be happening next week. It's because this past week, the Actress Vow coaching program launched. <gasps> the Actress Vow coaching program, yes. So I know I had never talked about it in this podcast, but remember how I said for many, many months, and if you've been listening from the beginning, that I was preparing something. So this is what I was preparing. I've been preparing the Actress Vow coaching program for months, you could even say years. It's basically uh, everything I have learned in 17 years in acting in one program. So the doors opened last week, and I was dealing with all that, the organization, checking everybody in, the registration and all that. Now, if you're interested in joining the program, if you're in the program, congrats. I'm so excited that you're in. But if you're not and you want to join, doors are going to be opening again at some point. I don't know when, but there is a waiting list. You can go to the Instagram link on bio or TikTok link on bio and you can sign up for the waiting list. And you're going to be the first one to find out when registration opens again. And you know, you're going to be the first one to uh, join if you want to. And if not, you can just see all the information, which is all great. Basically, the program is, I'm going to make it short because I could talk about it for hours, but the coaching program is an online school. There are classes included with it, yes, there are Zoom classes, but it's not only Zoom classes. I know there are a lot of coaching programs that are just, you know, one Zoom class a week, two Zoom classes a week, and that's it. Yes, there are two Zoom classes for 60 minutes every week, but there's also pre-recorded programs, there's a community, there's a membership area, there's uh, the ultimate auditioning course and two bonus courses. So there is so much to it. And the most important part and the thing that uh, to me is most important about the coaching is the community aspect of it. And I wanted to make this episode. Yes, again, I said I have guest episodes lined up to share with you, which we will do in the following weeks and they're going to be amazing. But Today I wanted to share with you, because I know there's a lot of you who are new, a lot of new listeners, so thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're new here, I wanted to share my story with you a little bit. We've gotten many new followers from TikTok, which is incredible. If you follow me on TikTok, I just love you so much and will love you forever, so thank you. But also on Instagram, all the love to all my Instagram followers too. But the point is... I'm not getting to the point. The point is there's so many of you that are new here and that is so exciting. So I wanted to tell you why I started the Actors Vow and what the Actors Vow is. No, it's not going to be a boring story. Just hang in there. It's going to be good. And at the end of the episode, I want to answer some of your questions because I've been getting hundreds of questions from you and I can't answer all of them on TikTok or on Instagram. So I thought I would uh, add a question section here on the podcast. So for those of you who do not, don't know, this podcast is about to be one year old. The one year anniversary of the Actors Vow is coming up, so I thought this would be the right time to share with you some things about my journey and why I decided to start this podcast. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that some of the things I would love to share with you and are very meaningful to this story you're about to hear, I cannot share for personal legal reasons. I'm going to leave it there. I cannot say more, but some things I cannot share at least right now. This story began three years ago when an actress who was studying in New York, born in Spain, who moved to New York City at 17 years old by herself to New York to study acting. She graduated. Yes, Denise studied acting. She graduated in New York with her BFA degree in acting and 
I had always, always my whole life said, I will never, never, never move to LA. I have visited LA many years ago and I had very high expectations. I thought, you know, Hollywood, the glamour, the stars, the fame, and all these amazing things. And I was so disappointed when I got here and all I saw was trash everywhere and the dirtiest and most terrible city I had ever seen. So I promised myself I would never, never live in LA. Also, I'm a big fan of theater. I started in the theater and theater is my first love and my biggest love. So I always thought I would only do theater. There was a point in my life where I said to myself, I'm never going to do film and TV, which Of course, I don't think like that right now at all. I love film and TV, but I graduated. Lo and behold, a few months before graduation, I'm having an existential crisis. Existential, you know, I'm from Spain. Like, do I go back to Spain? Do I stay here? For international people, they give you something called OPT. So you have a year to work in the US doing uh, the thing that you studied. So obviously I didn't want to go back to Spain. So I'm like, I'm going to stay here. Now, for personal circumstances, things that happened and me losing my mind, (laughs) I decided that I wanted to move to LA literally two months before graduating. I proceeded to tell my parents and they were like, are you crazy? You always said, you know, that was not the deal. We sent you to America to study New York and do theater. And now you want to go to LA and get into the film industry, which is, let's be honest, it is, it is a very different industry and it can be a very tough and scary industry if you're not prepared and you don't know what to expect from it. So I moved to LA. I moved to LA and everything was amazing. Everything was great. This is the parts that I cannot really, really talk about, which I wish I could tell you. I really do. It's not that, you know, I'm holding it back because I want to. Um, But for personal reasons and legal and health reasons, a lot of health reasons, I have not been able to act in the past year and a half, which is very tough because I started acting when I was seven years old. And since I was seven until the age of, you know, 20, I don't even know how old I am, (laughs) until the age of 22, uh, two years and a half ago. No, I'm almost 25 now. I don't know, whatever. Until two years and a half ago, I'm sorry, I'm having brain fog. I had always acted. There hadn't been a whole year in my life in which I had not acted. I had always been on stage, on a production, a film production or whatever. I had always acted. So it was very, very tough. Now the pandemic came like half a year into me not being able to act again for personal health, legal reasons. And... Nobody was able to act, which, you know, <laughs> it's not that I'm like, oh, I'm happy nobody can act, same as me. But, you know, it, it put me on a similar plane to everybody in the world because we all found ourselves in that uh, position, which is not a good position. It's been very terrible. And I know what you're going through to all the actors out there. It is very tough. And thank God, like now things are reopening and you're starting to work again. And I cannot wait for things to reopen. But beginning of the pandemic hit and you know I realized I needed to share that it had been half a year of me not acting which again for me that was a lot and I had realized that I needed to do something about it I couldn't just sit at home you know and do something else which I have lots of hobbies I have lots of things that I love but my true passion is acting so it's like I need to find a way to give back also I'm going to put a, a pause here I think, and I've mentioned this in the podcast so many times, when we actors start acting, we mostly do it for selfish reasons. You know, it makes us feel good. Uh, We like the uh, people telling us how talented we are and how great we are. We like, you know, if you're bullied or you don't have friends, that sense of community. It's always, if you really go back to it and why you started, it's for selfish reasons. But... It's going to come to a point in your career after you've been doing it for a long time that you're going to realize you can't just do it for selfish reasons. And there has to be a point where you realize there's something bigger than you in all this we do. And hopefully you've gotten to that point. And if you haven't, that's completely fine too. Again, a lot of actors start there. But I realized there was something way bigger than me. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. So I was like, wait, if I cannot act... What can I do to help others do that 
and you know stay still in in acting in this world I love so much and it's my whole life to be honest so I decided to create a podcast why a podcast I don't think I've talked about this ever before in the podcast but I have always been so self-conscious, well, especially since coming here to the US, about my accent and about speaking. As a young person, I was so shy. And it's really funny because a lot of uh, you listeners have been telling me that you are very shy and how to uh, deal with that. I used to be the most shy person you can imagine. I could not, you know, put two sentences together uh, in front of people. If it was an acting, of course, acting on stage, I've always been like, you know, no shyness, no nerves, no anxiety, no nothing. But as a person myself, always was very shy. So I've always also been someone who likes to um, challenge myself. And especially as an actor, I think it's very important. Then when I came to America, my accent was an, was an issue. And I really had a lot of issues, especially at the beginning. My accent was way thicker. And I had many people tell me, you know, you're not gonna get cast if you have an accent, which made me very self-conscious and it got to a point where I didn't want to, you know, talk or perform and I felt like every time I was talking or performing or saying anything, I was being judged by it because there were a lot of people telling me, you need to get rid of that accent. Now, anybody who's listening, if you have an accent, do not get rid of it. You do not listen to those people. Now, what you should do is get an accent coach. They're going to help you. They're professionals. And they're going to help you so you can switch the accent on and off at your convenience. That is awesome. You will have many more chances if you know you can have a perfect American accent and you can have your own accent. But please do not get rid of your accent. Accents are beautiful. And the industry is changing. And there's so many opportunities for people with accents right now. So please, please, please not just get rid of it and think that your accent is hindering your career because it's not. So the reason why I decided to start a podcast is because a podcast is just voice. And I wanted to challenge myself. I was like, Denise, if you can talk into a microphone to these people and, you know, just do the podcast, you're going to get over this like big fear and insecurity you have. And it really has helped me a lot in this whole year. But I digress. The Actors Vow started as a podcast, but it's always been something bigger in my mind. And now we're getting emotional. Please don't cry. Please don't cry. I'm going to start crying. (laughs) The Actors Vow was also supposed to be, and it's starting to be now. Well, it is full on now. It is full on now, which is crazy. It's like a dream. A community for actors. Growing up, I didn't have that community for actors. Yes, I did a lot of acting, but... Let's be real, the industry is very lonely sometimes. (laughs) Like a lot of people are not willing to help each other. And when I moved to the US, I moved by myself. And let's be real, it was so damn lonely, especially the first months. And even when I left after studying college, there were so many questions I had when I moved to LA. There were so many things I wish I had known and so many mistakes I could have avoided if I had known them and I had had someone to guide me. So that's the reason why I decided to start the Actors Vow, this community and the coaching program because I think there are incredible schools out there. I think there are incredible people teaching acting. But I also know there aren't that many communities, especially online on a big level where you really can connect, network and have that guide, have that person who you can go to for any question you have about acting. Because, you know, there are errors that you can make in acting that you will fail, you will learn. But there are very big errors too that could really cost you your life. And if you make them, you can go through a very, very dark and bad path. So, yes. I guess what I'm trying to say is the actor's vow is very special. It's not just a podcast. It's not just an Instagram page. Now a TikTok page and, you know, a coaching program. The actor's vow, it's it's a community for all of you. I am here to guide you, to help you if you're in the coaching program. Of course, even more, I will work closely with you. This is very special because this is exactly what I, and I know many, many, many actors who are now working 
wish they had when they were starting out. So please do not ever, ever hesitate to reach out to me. Do not ever hesitate to ask questions because this is the whole point of the actor's vow. Now for all of those of you that are wondering if I like personally on a personal level, I am better in all the things that I told you I couldn't talk about. Yes, yes, I am. Things are getting better. Thank you for asking. I love you. So um, I hope that is clear. I hope you now understand why this is, you know, so special and why you're here and why the coaching program is so important. And if you're an actor, you know, you can get that training and you can get that coaching. You can get that guidance. Uh, if you're plus 12, you're going to be able to get that. You're going to be able to get that training that a lot of actors might not have, but it is so necessary for the industry. Trust me, you do not want to go into the industry with no training and no understanding of the business side of it and no understanding of what really is going on and what you're doing. Now let's get to the questions. You guys have been sending me so many questions and I am here to answer them. Okay, so the first question. Someone asked, I want to be in movies. I love that, but my English isn't perfect. So can I? That is a great question. I know a lot of you are international. A lot of you listening, a lot of you on TikTok, Instagram. Listen, when I moved to the US at 17 years old, my English was terrible. I had the thickest accent. I, you know, I could put like a few sentences together. Of course, I could learn a monologue in English, but it was terrible. And I, to be honest, said yes to a lot of things that I didn't even know what they were telling me. I learned by just coming here and just having to learn because, you know, that was the only thing I could do to survive, just learn English. There was nobody else who spoke Spanish or any other language uh, around me. And especially because I was in acting school. So you do have to learn English. Now, does it have to be perfect? No, it is a process. As long as you understand basic English, You can, you know, I mean, it is bold what I did. I'm not telling you to move, you know, to the US or the UK and like just see what happens. But that is something you can work on. You can take classes. You can work on that. Listen, the best ways to learn English is read a book. Take a book. And I'm talking about thick books. Nothing like easy. No, no, no. Take a book and a dictionary. People don't use dictionaries nowadays, do you? The phone. Just take your phone and every single word that you don't know look it up. Now, yes, when you start, you're going to be looking up one out of five words and it's going to be very annoying. But by the end of that 500 page book, you're only going to look up one out of 200 or 300 or a thousand, depending on, you know, how fast you learn. That is a very good way to learn. And that is something that really helped me. Another way to learn is through music. I mean, if you have, you know, you listen to music that's in English, you can always like try to listen to the lyrics and translate them. Another amazing way to learn if you're an actor, listen to the movies in the original version. Listen to them in English with English subtitles. If you don't put the subtitles, it's not really going to help because you're not going to understand what they're saying. But if you put the subtitles, you're going to match what they're saying with the words, with that sound. And at some point, you're not going to need the subtitles that much. So those are just a few tips from me. Let's go to the next question. Someone asked, how old is the normal age for someone to start acting? That's a great question. I've been getting so many of you who are so many ages, like 12, 8, 18, 20 something. And you're, you're like, am I too early? Am I too late? Let me tell you something. You are never too late, first of all, for acting. There are so many professional actors who have started late in their life and are very, very successful. Now, if you're young and you're a minor, there is no appropriate age where you should start. There are many child actors. But what I'm going to tell you is please do not start if you don't have training and a fundamental understanding of the industry, especially your parents, they're going to take care more of that, you know, agencies and all that. But make sure you really inform yourself in that. And for classes, especially if you're like plus 12, 12 plus, really make sure you have that understanding of what's happening in an audition and all that, because otherwise you're going to go and it's going to be a waste of time. 
you really want to have the foundation for your craft, your technique, so you are able to make the most out of it. Acting is a tough industry, so also as a child, as a teenager, please make sure you know, you know, you have that support from your parents and you know what you're getting yourself into. That's why I'm saying do research and study first. This is a great question. I'm wanting to start acting on Netflix originals and films. How do I make my way up when I'm a beginner? That is such a great question. And I know a lot of you are already thinking about these big things. And listen, it is amazing that you have these big goals. But let's take it step by step. You cannot start right away on Netflix. Let me rephrase that. Some people do, but that's just like very minimal. Usually, you go step by step. And step by step starts by taking classes, by having that foundation and that understanding that I talked about. After that, you're going to be able to self-submit. There are casting websites for that, depending on where you're located. I have some more information on that on TikTok. And you're going to be able to self-submit. When you have self-submitted for a while, gotten some experience, it can even be student films. It can be, you know, indie films. Don't think just because you're not doing big studio stuff, it's useless. That is not true. At the beginning, what you want is experience practice and to get better every time you do something. So it's amazing to do smaller productions at the beginning. Also to build your resume. Now, once you've taken classes and you have experience, then you can build your acting packet. You build your resume, your video reel, your headshots, and all those fun things that we're going to learn in detail in the coaching program. And you're going to get an agent with that or a manager. Now, when you get there, from there, you're going to be able to make it to that. You can also self-submit yourself. I'm not saying you can't continue self-submitting yourself. As a matter of fact, there are incredible professional working actors who are doing great self-submitting themselves. But the, it gets to a point in your career where it is easier to have an agent. Also, agents get bigger breakdowns. The big agencies that we as actors don't get. So yes, but that is the process step by step. This is a wonderful question too. Someone asked, when in an audition, they ask for a picture of you, a headshot, do you put it in the self-tape audition or do you take a headshot and show it or just send it separately? This makes a lot of sense. I guess we're talking in, a, in an audition in person or in a self-tape. Let's explain. If it's an audition in person, you're going to attach that headshot to your resume. I have a video on that on Instagram and TikTok, so you can see how to do that. If it is a self-tape, you're going to send two separate files. One is going to be your resume, one is going to be your headshot, and the other one is going to be your audition. So yes, you do send the headshot. You usually send it all together, and usually the headshot goes with the resume. Now, if you're sending it online, make it separate documents, and please name the file don't leave the file with a weird, like, long number, weird name. Your name underscore headshots or your name underscore resume. Those are great ways to name your files, to send to casting directors, to agents, and to whoever you're sending your audition. And the last question. How should I make a video reel to submit to an agency if I don't have any experience? What a great question. So a lot of you are like, I don't have a video reel. I've never acted in anything. As I said, if you haven't acted in anything, I wouldn't think about agencies right now. I would start from the beginning. But still, you want a video reel because casting websites ask for video clips. So this is what you're going to do if you don't have any footage, like professional footage of you acting. Ideally, you have friends. <laughs> not like you don't have friends. I know. I mean, listen, I don't know. Whatever. But ideally, you have friends that also love acting. If you don't, that's okay, I have another solution for you. But if you do, that's awesome. You grab that friend that wants to be an actor too. You grab a friend or someone that you know that wants to be an editor or someone who wants to be a director, someone who has a nice camera or you just record it on your iPhone and you do your best to perform and record something. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have, you know, you edit it the best you can, like looking at what movies uh, do you prepare a scene that matches your types, you prepare a scene that works for you, and you can prepare all those clips. Now, if you're like, no, I don't have friends who are into that kind of stuff, and I cannot do that, you can always do monologues. 
just a self tape. It is better to have a self tape or a reading. I mean, it could be a monologue or, you know, reading sites and send that and have the different clips where the different uh, types are, then just not have anything. If there is nothing else, just record yourself like you would in a self tape. All right, so those were the questions for this week. Next week, we're going to have an incredible guest. I'm very excited to share the guest with you. We have awesome guests coming up that I'm trying to get for the podcast, so it's going to be awesome. But I really wanted to do a one-on-one episode, you and me, and talk about these things and answer some of your questions. Since there's so many of you that are new, I wanted to make sure, you know, we got to know each other and I don't know, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for being patient these two weeks in which the podcast disappeared, but it's back, I promise. And thank you for, you know, following on social media and listening and all the support and being part of this beautiful, beautiful community of artists that it's becoming such a beautiful and big thing and it's only growing from here. So, I'm going to remind you, if you don't already, please subscribe on iTunes. It is very, very helpful for the podcast. And you can also leave a review. You don't have to write anything. You can just leave a five-star review. It like, takes a moment. Just click the button. And, you know, if I've ever helped you in this podcast, if this is helpful to you, if, you know, this is entertaining, this is going to help other people listen to the podcast. So please leave a review, leave a message, and follow on iTunes. Also, make sure to follow on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, youtube and tiktok as a reminder on youtube the interviews are there with video which is very cool you can put it on tv and watch them so yeah i mean this will be all for this week uh we're still in like the first weeks of the coaching program so there's a lot to do but again next week we're gonna have an awesome guest here and i cannot wait for you to hear all about her i hope you have an amazing rest of your week And I will see you next Wednesday.